Good afternoon and welcome. When you think about our topic today, it makes perfect sense that it would be a World Leaders Forum at Columbia University. After all, the question before us is one whose answer could have a profound impact on our understanding of our physical world, indeed on the very nature of matter. Through application of the standard model of particle physics, we've long had a theoretical description of how the so-called Higgs boson should work. But the existence of the elusive Higgs particle has never been experimentally verified, and the knowledge likely to result from the current effort to achieve that goal fascinates scientists and many, many others around the globe. So it's fitting that we have gathered literally just a few steps from historic Pupin Hall, where the first great generation of Columbia physicists under I.I. Robbie undertook the pioneering basic research, resulting in Nobel Prizes that seemed about as frequent during the mid-20th century as Yankee pennants. Today, the process of conducting the highest level physics research is truly a worldwide endeavor of massive proportions, as Columbia particle physicist Mike Tutts will shortly explain to us. We are especially proud that Mike is the project manager for the U.S. team of international scientists undertaking a key part of the experimental work at CERN, at the Large Hadron Collider outside Geneva, Switzerland, known as the Atlas Project. A great teacher as well as scholar, Mike has been on the Columbia faculty for nearly 30 years, including the last few spent on regular flights to and from Geneva. We will see and hear more from Mike on how Atlas has been generating the data that may soon be able to verify the existence of the Higgs. Sitting next to him will be Columbia's eminent theoretical physicist and mathematician Brian Greene. It is no overstatement to say that through his best-selling books, his PBS Nova programs, and his co-founding with Tracy Day, of the annual World Science Festival here in New York City, Brian has done as much as any scholar of his generation to spread greater public understanding, not only of his own cutting edge string theory, but of basic science literacy in general. As one of contemporary science's true public intellectuals, no one is more interested to find out or more expert in explaining the potential results of the experiments that Mike Tutts and his team are conducting in the Large Hadron Collider. As Brian recently put it in the New York Times, finding the Higgs particle would complete an essential chapter in our quest to understand the basic constituents of the universe. That brings us to our moderator today, our Dean of Science for the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, Professor Amber Miller, a very respected physicist who has herself been leading a team at our Nevis Laboratory in Westchester that is building a remarkable suborbital telescope called EBEX that's going to make those really nice digital photos on your iPhone look a bit less impressive. In the near future, a stadium-sized helium balloon will carry EBEX into the upper reaches of the atmosphere above Antarctica, where its job will be to sense light particles left over from the Big Bang that were emitted when the universe was a mere 380,000 years old what Amber helpfully describes as, quote, baby pictures of the universe. If Mike Tutz's research, addressing how mass comes about, takes place at the smallest possible level, at energy scales only accessible to particle accelerators, 
Amber's research into the origins of space can only be investigated by astrophysical measurements of energy scales roughly a million billion times larger than that. Sitting on the other side of Amber will be two of the leading science journalists whose job it is to explain this extraordinary kind of work to the general public. New York Times science writer Dennis Overby has for years been regularly filling, filing vivid descriptions and dispatches from the front lines of experimental physics, astronomy, and related fields of science. While it doesn't say this on his official byline, I am told that he will accept the title as the Times Cosmic Affairs Correspondent. A graduate in physics from MIT, he's managed to cover everything from zero gravity fashion shows to the status of Pluto. The author of Lonely Hearts of the Cosmos, The Scientific Search for the Secret of the Universe, and Einstein in Love, a Scientific Romance, he might be tested today on his well-honed ability to use an Albert Einstein quotation in every context. No one given to, not one given to journalistic hyperbole, Dennis only last month wrote of the much anticipated data regarding the existence of the Higgs particle that, quote, the end of the biggest manhunt in the history of physics might finally be in sight. That ideally captures why we are having this discussion today. Next to Dennis in the press pool is Mariette de Cristina, the editor-in-chief of Scientific American, who oversees the print magazine scientificamerican.com, Scientific American Mind, and newsstand, newsstand Special Editions. She is only the eighth person and the first woman to serve in the top post in Scientific American's 166-year history. Mariette first came to the magazine in 2001 as the executive editor after 14 years as a writer and editor at Popular Science. Named an American Academy for the Advancement of Science Fellow in 2011, she has also served as president of the 2,500 member National Association of Science Writers. Under her leadership, Scientific American received the 2011 National Magazine Award for General Excellence. While this is going to be a general, wide open discussion that will also involve those of you here in the audience, we are depending upon Mariette and Dennis not only to tell us why they think the experimental verification of the Higgs particle is an important story for science journalism, but also to do what great reporters do best to question the experts and to help us all, non-experts, learn more about their work and why it matters. So here we are at a potentially historic moment for modern science and certainly a great one for Columbia science. Our commitment to basic science and applied science can be seen most immediately just a few short yards from here in the new Northwest Corner building, itself a feat of civil engineering that provides both a physical and an intellectual bridge linking together academic disciplines to address essential scientific questions of our time. And we are now undertaking a new science initiative co-led by Amber and our Executive Vice President for Research, Mike Purdy, that will be dedicated to supporting excellence across the sciences at Columbia. There's no better example of this commitment to scientific leadership than our faculty members on the panel today, who each in their own way are seeking answers to the most fundamental questions about the physics of matter, space, and time, including what if we find the Higgs particle? And what if we don't? With that, let me welcome our panel to the stage and turn the program over to Professor and Dean Amber Miller. Thank you. <laughs> 